John chapter 20 verse 19. John 20 verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of their lives, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. In the same chapter, verse 26, And after eight days, again his disciples were with him, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you, or peace be upon you. For the last four weeks, we are meditating on shallow divine peace, God's peace, a, pronunci a pronunciation of God's blessing upon God's people. It is a very common Greek word, shalo, and even today they use that word to salute one another. In our English Bible it is translated peace, but peace is the absence of war. The, Greek, the Hebrew word shalo has got a great and deep meaning. Basically, shalom means completeness and also it means uh, soundness, welfare, safety, health, prosperity, tranquility, containment, wellness and wholeness. And for the last three weeks, we are meditating around whom this peace shall come. On whom this peace or this blessing shall come. Jesus in his parting words in a night that he was betrayed. He told his disciples, I leave my peace with you. And his post resurrective greetings Peace be upon you. Peace be unto you. And Jesus told his disciples, When you visit a house, greet that house. Peace be upon you. And this was the greeting we see in the Old Testament. When they see one another, they say, Peace be upon you. Shalom alaikum. Alaikum. And generally the responsive greeting is Alaikum, Shalom. In Arabic that is Salam Alaikum. Alaikum, Salam. It means one and the same, peace be upon you. Even the Old Testament we say God's promise. Even when mountains depart, and hills are removed when we are totally broken, humiliated, brought low. He says, I make a covenant of shalom with you. I will provide you this completeness, this soundness. He wants to give this peace. He wants to pronounce this peace upon his people. But Jesus said, Luke chapter 10 verses 5 and 6, and into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. Now listen, and if the Son of Peace be there, ye pronounce, Peace be upon this house. And if, and if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, if the Son of Peace is not there, if not, it shall turn to you again. 
it shall turn to you again the same thing we see in Matthew chapter 10 verse 13 and if the house be worthy and if the house be worthy let your peace come upon it but, but if it be not worthy let your peace return to you let your peace return to you so it's very important that house must be worthy there must be the son of peace inside there must be the son of peace or the daughter of peace in the bible we read they know not the way of peace they don't know the way of peace the world doesn't know how to get peace in another place Jesus says at least on this day at least on this day if you know how to get peace if you know the ways to your peace indeed you are blessed Jesus wept and said at least today it is good if you could know the way of peace my dear brother my dear sister how can we have this peace so properly in this second series peace be upon you upon whom today we have come to the third part we have come to the third part in the last two weeks we were able to see seven important points from the Bible upon who this peace shall be number one this peace is to his people the world cannot get this peace this shalom shalom what God pronounces that completeness that joy that health that prosperity that contentment that shallow is to his people is not enough that we are his people number two we should be his saints our life must be separated for his purpose for his cause and not only separated it should be set apart for God's cause and for kingdom cause and we must have that cleanliness that sanctification everybody is talking about election we are the days of the election fever and Lord and white the cry is we need a clean government we won't have a chief minister we won't have a battery of ministers we won't have a prime minister we won't have politicians they are Mr. Clean, Miss Clean so they need a a dignified life for that office they need a dignified life for that office so to be called his saints we need that holy life we need that holy life a dignified life so we should be his people is not enough that we are his people we are his saints and we separate our life for his cause to enjoy God's peace in our life we should apply the laws of the scriptures in our life these laws are the way for our happiness in Psalm 1 meditate on the law of the Lord day and night meditate on the law of the Lord day and night then your peace shall be great whatever you do it shall prosper so our success the secret of our success is based on how much we know the law of the Lord 
and how much we apply the law of the lord in our life in our life that's a principle that governs our life there are physical laws chemical laws biological laws mathematical laws geographical laws there are a lot of laws around us similarly there are spiritual laws so when we apply god's laws in our lives we can enjoy god's shalom in our life so god's people god's saint and god saints who apply their laws so it's not only we apply spiritual laws when we apply spiritual laws naturally we become upright perfect in our lifestyle our lifestyle is very important to enjoy the peace of god a wife lies to her husband the husband lies to his wife the parents are not true to the children children are not true to the parents they don't do their work properly in the office they don't obey the law of the land they don't have a perfect life they cannot enjoy shalom in their lives they cannot enjoy shalom in their lives my dear brother my dear sister it is one of the great strengths for me one of the great strengths for sister in our family life for the glory of the lord for our edification i tell you i don't remember the situation ever i lied to her or she ever lied to me not only to one another we don't believe that we don't remember i don't remember that i ever lied to anybody not to brag about it is possible it is possible a life of commitment and i and i know that many of you got that noble life i know that many of you have not ever lied at least after you come into christ so what do i mean by this an upright life is very very essential an upright life is very very essential that we could enjoy peace there is any problem come or not i am upright i am straight forward i am not leaning to this side or to that side it was very important so last week we considered three more points this peace is to the righteous i was explaining what that word righteous means to have right standing with god righteousness biblically is not just a moral character righteousness is not just a moral character it is taking a right stand with god what is right for god is right for me what god believes i believe god believed that abraham could have a child through sarah and abraham believed that sarah believed that that's counted unto their righteousness that counted unto righteousness Joseph hears that uh, uh, Mary was pregnant even before her marriage. God said, uh, "Don't doubt it; it's of me. Don't hesitate to take her. Okay, it's God's stand. Don't hesitate to take her. I take her. I take her. What is right with God is right with me. What's God's stand? That's my stand. So righteousness is not just a moral character." righteousness is taking a right stand with god and number 6 last week we considered to the meek the word meek doesn't mean covered it not just have the mouth zipped uh, one sister in a very uh cheerfully told me so far i miss and this even i used to advise my daughter whatever they say just keep your mouth shut just keep your mouth shut just endure it but that is not the meek this is the first time i understood she told me what is really meek not getting put up it's not that we should not be angry when something goes wrong we should be angry 
we should be stern, we should be firm, we should correct, maybe a, a look that disapproves, maybe a word. What is that intensity needed to correct that wrong? I always say getting angry is a virtue. The Bible says Moses was very meek person. It doesn't mean that he was never angry. He was angry. Jesus, the God, we read about God's wrath. We read about God's wrath. Jesus took the whip in his hands. So angry itself is not against meekness. Meek, against meekness is irritated when we are hurt. Perturbed when we are hurt. Now please listen carefully. We are hurt. We don't want to retaliate. We keep our mouth zipped. We keep our lips zipped. That's not meekness. That's not meekness. You are fretting and fuming within. You don't have the life of Christ within. Tears roll down. Your cheeks become red. Your lips quiver. Every nerve is strained. But you are not speaking a word. You are not speaking a word. My dear brother, my dear sister. That is not meekness. Meekness is an entirely different one. Enjoying when we are hurt. Not pretend, not alarmed. It doesn't touch me. It's your attitude towards your difficult situations. Last week I gave an illustration. The people enjoy skiing. Waves rise up to 28 feet. About three stories. Waves rise up to 28 feet. They play in it. They play in it. In cricket they bowl the ball with a speed of 100 km per hour. Somebody plays that ball. He enjoys playing that ball. He's not getting perturbed. He's not getting irritated. He's throwing the ball so fast. No, he's not. He enjoys it. That's meekness. Meekness is not just being quiet. Enjoying our difficult situations. Playing in the waves. Pursuing our enemy. Last evening, last evening I was explaining a beautiful situation with one of the sisters. You become tired. The battle is very heavy. You are thirsty. You want to escape from that situation. You want to hide, you want to run away. You want to have a change. You want the situation to change. No more you are able to pursue the enemy. No more you want to have battle. But I just, just I told you, just think about a little one. He plays, he plays, he plays, he sweats, he becomes tired, exhausted. He enjoys his play. He comes, he takes a sip of water, immediately he rushes to play. He wants to play. He drinks water only to pursue his play, not to withdraw from his play, not to withdraw from his game. That sip of water he takes, that sip of water he takes, not to withdraw from his game, but to pursue his game. Yesterday in our VBS, VBS teachers orientation program, in a group activity, we just told them to read a particular verse. 
He drank of the river. And what does it mean? Each group gave a different interpretation. The king was drinking water in a palace is a different thing. He can drink apple juice, he can drink grape juice, he can drink wine. He drinks that in his palace, he drinks of a cup. Now there is no cup, there is no grape juice, there is no wine. This king kneels down, bent forward, take the water in his hands of a river, he drinks. Where is he? Why is he drinking the water of a river? Is there anything in the Old Testament to understand this? In the book of Judges when they are going for war, they took water in their hands. They were drinking it fast. They had to run for their, pursue their enemy. They had to pursue their enemy. They are drinking, their, drinking the water of the river. Drinking the water of the river. Those who attended yesterday's program in the evening they know. Drinking water of the river. It's got a very deep meaning to pursue the enemy. Then he shall be exalted. My dear brother, my dear sister, meekness is enjoying your battle, enjoying your victory. When you are getting irritated, not irritated, not perturbed. If we have this conversation, our peace shall be great. Our peace shall be great. Last week, we saw number 7, Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If we are spiritually minded, our mindset is spiritual, carnal spiritual. Before we are born again, we are carnal, we are natural men. Now we are born again. We are spiritual. So our mindset is very important. And in Galatians chapter 5, we read from verse 19. Galatians chapter 5, we read from verse 19. You know what is cornally minded. Cornally minded. There shall be wrath. There shall be jealous. Envy, enmity. No, I won't talk to her. I don't go to that house. Let come what me. Even if she dies, I will not look at her face. Even I don't see the face of the dead body. No, I will not go there. Revelings, merry making. These are carnally minded. The works of the flesh. They are manifest in Tamil, Veli Arangam. Arangam means a stage. Arangam, an auditorium. Veli Arangam, open door auditorium. Veli Arangam. It's open to all. Everybody could see it. We have got a nature for merry making. Merry making. Say a child's birthday comes. You want to celebrate that birthday. What is important in that birthday? Namke was because that's the Shastra, Sambradaya, have a prayer meeting, invite a pastor, pastor must come. Pastor must give a short message 
And when pastor is preaching, they are very, uh, very much engaged in receiving the guests and all. No mind to listen to the word of God. They, 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 that message is only a sampradaya. So we have to decorate, we must have balloon, we must have Duncan's cap, we must have a cake, we must have a candle. This merry making takes a very important place. Merry making takes a very important place. That festivity. Not celebrating the holiness. Many times we don't question why do we do it. Many times we don't question why somebody must be standing there with a Duncan cap, that conical cap. We may not question why should we blow the candle. We may not question why should we cut the cake and eat it. This is how a birthday should be celebrated. We are very much interested in Thali autumn. We are cordially minded. You see, there may be many quarrels because of that. If the cake is not proper, there will be a quarrel. If somebody has not come for that birthday party, there will be a quarrel. If the food is not good, there will be a quarrel. The wife wanted to buy a dress, the husband wanted to buy another dress, there will be a quarrel. She had in mind a dress for 2,000 rupees, he bought a dress for 1,800 rupees, there's a quarrel. In birthday party, whether we buy a dress for the child or not, the mother wants to buy a sari. Then the husband wants to, the father wants to buy a dress, a new pants and shirt. See, it's all the festivity. Finally, the victim is peace. Finally, the victim is peace. We are unable to enjoy peace. Many festivals come. We don't enjoy peace. Because the festivity takes the most important place. We are carnally minded. No, I don't want to go to his house. I will not talk to him. I don't like it. When we are carnally minded, we cannot enjoy peace. So in 5.19 Galatians we see the works of flesh. Then from verse 21 the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. That is spiritually minded. Our mindset is for love. Our mindset is for joy. Our mindset is for happiness. I was explaining to a believer yesterday. Just imagine in all these situations, in the ministry, in the family, in all these situations, how I could have reacted, how I reacted. Had I reacted like this, the situations came in the ministry. If I reacted like this, I would have lost my peace. I reacted in this way, or I acted in this way, I got peace. Spiritually minded is peace. Cornerly minded is death. In ministry, in family situations, where you desire joy, where you desire happiness, where you desire love, gentleness, the fruit of the Spirit. The peace that passeth all understanding will fill our hearts and our minds. We lose our peace because we are carnally minded. So number 8, Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, perfect shalom. The Lord will keep him in perfect shalom, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Very, very important. Number eight. Make a note of it. 
when you trust in the law when your mind is not wavering when your mind stayed on him your peace will be great many years back i always remember this illustration anand jeevananda a very mighty evangelist mightily used by the lord and he was able to reach even the lowest strata of the people with this humorous presentation of the gospel i remember one of the illustrations and jeevananda them said once there was a donkey it went to a hay stack like a pot there was one big hay stack and this donkey tasted the vacuum in this hay stack it was good and there was another hay stack so this donkey turned this side and ate that vacuum that was tasty the donkey was very hungry now the donkey didn't know whether this hay stack is tasty or this hay stack in the vacuum taste or this vacuum taste turn this side turn this side turn this side he was unable to take a decision it was turning to the left to the right throughout the night by the time it was dawn it broke its neck and died it broke its neck and died our mind stayed on him not wavering trusting in the lord trusting in the lord then in the bible he says i will keep him in perfect shalom shalom itself is perfect in perfect shalom not imperfect perfect 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 completeness perfect soundness how wonderful it is i'll keep him in perfect peace if his mind is stayed on me whenever we have to take a decision our mindset is very important spiritually minded a mind a mind set on him so he is then he is able to deliver me whether he delivers me or not i will not worship this statue and many people say if the lord heals me i'll take baptism if the lord doesn't heal you no i will not take baptism if the lord shows this sin uh, this a uh, uh, sign I'm just waiting for a sign. If the Lord does this for me, then I'll remove my jobs. If the Lord doesn't do it, I will not. Gideon asked for a sign. The Lord did it for Gideon. I will also ask for a sign. But Shatrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, they are of different kinds. The Lord is able to deliver me from this fire, from your hand, from the den of lion. The Lord delivers me or not? I set my face on this. When the Lord called me for ministry, called us for ministry, we had to feed six mouths. uh my parents were with this two children christian hepsi very small ones the lord called us for ministry she was to put in a nursery kindergarten we know how we could make the ends meet six mouths to be fed no contract with pastor sundaram ayya i knew what type of ministry i was going to do 
whether to spread the mat or to be a preacher or to be a pastor even before that i was a known evangelist every week at least i used to preach 26 sermons and when i was stepping out for ministry i never knew what awaited me god called me i resigned i didn't know what pastor would give me pastor saw a house for us to a rent of rupees 700 700 for the first few months pastor sundaram ya gave me 1000 rupees that's also in bits and pieces 700 rupees rent i had to pay for electricity i was to maintain my vehicles Two children should be sent to the school. Six mouths to be fed. There's no one to give me any other offering. We are facing difficult situations. June, July, August. September pastor asked me, Kappal eppadi pohudhu? I said, aadi aadi pohudhu. He said, kappal na aadi aadi daam pohudhu. I said, getting a soul man. My mind stayed on him. My mind stayed on him. My dear brother, my dear sister, five years passed by. When the Lord wanted us to start this ministry, a great problem was to keep my books Where will I make my wife and our children to sleep? I didn't have a single pie in my hand at that time. I believed in those days that what I get I should spend. I should not just keep it idle. The manna that is not used will stink. So as we were spending what we were receiving in the ministry. My dear brother, my dear sister, the Lord said, we were paid. The Lord said, we were paid. The Lord showed the way. Second of September, In the evening I preached in ACA. 9th September I preached in Kame. Not one week was lost. Because of this Lord's doing many people thought He has got everything pre-planned. It is true, God has pre-planned everything. Even the time that I got saved the Lord revealed to me Eden was before Adam. If you want to just make a, no, make a note of it somewhere. You can remember this as one of the quotations our pastor believed. Our pastor said, Eden before Adam. Before Adam could be created, God had created an Eden for him. After creating Adam, God was not searching for a place where Adam could be put. 100% is true. Some people thought that it was pre-planned. Everything was pre-planned from the Lord. When I was stepping out, I was in dark. Sister was in dark. We don't know what we are doing, what we are going, what, what's going to happen. We were in dark. But the Lord has got everything pre-planned. The Lord will not leave you. The Lord will not forsake you. You may say, Oh, the Lord has worked out everything good for you. My dear brother, my dear sister, I praise God for that. 
whether he delivers us from this den of lion or not, whether he delivers us from the hand of Nebuchadnezzar or not, whether he will do this for, uh, do this, uh, do this for us or not, I will not do it. I will not worship this statue. I will not stop praying. I will not change my decision. Does it happen or doesn't happen? It works out or doesn't work out? My mind stays on him. I trust in him. If you can develop that nature, your peace shall be great. Your peace shall be great. Because we trust in him. And your peace will be greater if you trust in Him that others could see that you are trusting in the Lord. Greater blessing will be. Others should know He is trusting in the Lord. He is trusting in the Lord. My dear brother, my dear sister, Somebody may say, Oh, sister, cooperate in all these things. That's why you are able to achieve. Even to have this sister, I trusted in the Lord. To have this husband, she trusted in the Lord. Not our choice. Not the choice of our parents. The perfect choice of the Lord. Made for each other. Trusted in the Lord. Not what I liked. Not what I desired. Not what I proposed. Not somebody proposed. My dear brother, my dear sister. If your mind stayed on the Lord. A young man told me. Pastor, I want to have a girl. From his wife. I want to have a girl. According to God's heart. But our yada wada maitha sanjara wada. So he had his own choice. Allowed to keep my comments reserved. Allowed to keep my comments reserved. We find it very difficult to trust in the Lord. That's why our peace is not great. I'll give him great peace. His mind is stayed on him. His mind is stayed on him. That's very, very important. So we should be spiritually minded. And let come what me. Our mind must be stayed on the Lord. Number nine. To them who find wisdom and understanding. Proverbs 3.17 Her ways are ways of uh, pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Whose ways in verse 13 happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and gets understanding. Then all his ways will be peaceful. The first step of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you can find wisdom, if you can understand the situation in a right way, all your way, there will be peace. In all your way, there will be peace. You'll find the way of pleasantness, pleasure. Foolishness is one of those things that can defile a person. 
as a dead ye a dead fly as a dead fly would make a bottle of perfume stink a small foolishness will make our life stink make our life stink there the other day had been for a marriage there were a lot of confusions i never seen a marriage it was totally disarranged everything was in a confused state i was feeling very sad when i was coming out the bride and the bridegroom were marching forward and the clergy were just coming out you know what the first thing the girl's father told me ya theriyama na sambandha eduthiraya the day that marriage marriage was just over and the boy and the girl were marching forward theriyama na sambandha eduthiraya why do we lose our peace we don't have wisdom we don't have understanding we don't plan properly we don't apply the laws of the nature we don't apply the laws of the spirit we don't apply biblical laws we don't even take human reasoning we don't understand understand means acting positively on the information received acting positively on the information received we are not wise a few weeks back a girl came and wept she took a wrong decision she fell in love with somebody later found that he was not trustworthy now everybody knew that she was she was in love with that man going with him spending time with him her relatives knew that her friends knew that her neighbors knew that she is unable to continue in that love she was unable to quit that love how foolish one day one young girl wept to us I made a wrong choice. I made him believe that we were in love. If I could take a wrong decision today, if I want, if I differ from that love, he'll kill me. He'll throw acid on me. He threatens that he will cut his veins with. blade and he would commit suicide now this is going to be my fate i'm going to marry him she was not marrying him because she was in true love with him she is scared that he would throw acid on her face that girl came to us she wept she said now it's very difficult for me to defer and endure the punishment for my wrong choice and endure the punishment for my wrong choice I'll marry him marry him is not a joy marry him is a punishment for her how much we lose your peace because you are not wise you don't have understanding Your ways are not pleasantness. Your ways are with thorns. Your ways are with bristles, stones, rugged. You make things worst. You make things worst. You don't want to obey your parents. You don't want to obey the church. Father, shut up. Mother, you don't know what pastor knows. 
You make a wrong choice. You don't have wisdom. Your understanding is bad. Your life is not a pleasantness. Your life is a path of punishment. Your life is a path of pain. It's not the path of peace. We make wrong choices. With the wisdom they buy things. They buy costly bikes, costly cars. They take it on higher purchase. Because so and so has got a fridge, I must have a fridge. I don't have a question whether I can keep water in it or not. Whether I can pay the installment or not. Whether I can pay the electricity for it or not. I won't have a fridge because so and so has got a fridge. Without fridge I cannot live. Without washing machine, I cannot wash. They may not even know whether they got a place to keep the washing machine or not. Whether they got a good supply of water or not, I must have a washing machine. The very simple equation, because so and so has got a washing machine, I must also have a washing machine. Think for a minute, how much you lose your peace? Because you are not wise in your choices. You are not wise in your decisions. Your path is full of pain, business. They don't have the wisdom, a spiritual wisdom. There are ways which seem good unto us. The end thereof is death. There are ways which seem good unto us and the end thereof is death. So we must be very meek. We should be spiritually minded. Our mind must be set on him. And also we must have wisdom and understand. We must have wisdom and understand. Number 10 is very very important. Nevertheless the other facts are not less important. However, this is very important because generally this is not correctly understood. Number 10. To him who's, who is jealous for the law. Who is jealous for the law. Make a note and if you have got a copy of the Bible, kindly turn with us to Numbers 20. Numbers 25 verse 12. Numbers 25 verse 12. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. It's not that I will give him peace. My covenant of peace. What is covenant of peace? When mountains depart, when hills are removed, my peace shall be with you. I make a covenant. Not a contract. A covenant that governs the totality of both the parties. Let come what may, I will give my peace. I make a covenant of peace with him. It's not the peace like a river. It's not peace like waves of the sea. The last point in this series God makes a covenant of peace, not just pronouncing peace be upon you. He enters into a covenant, a covenant of peace with him. With whom? It is with Pinehas, we read in verse 11. Pinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, had turned my wrath away from the children of Israel while he was jealous for my sake among them that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. There are two parts, I don't have time to explain, there are two parts. Part one, you are jealous for the Lord. A zeal for the Lord. A zeal for the Lord. A zealot. A militant for the Lord. A terrorist for the devil. 
a militant for the Lord, a terrorist for the devil. Not a mediocre person. A militant, a militant saint. Zeal. They were area called zealots. One of the disciples of Jesus, Simon, the zealot. Today we can say the militant. A militant of a country will be called a terrorist of another country. A militant who fights for his people. He is called for the people who are fight, whom we are fighting against. A terrorist. So if you are a militant for heaven, you will be a terrorist for the hell. If you are a militant for the kingdom of God, you are a terrorist for the, de for the kingdom of the devil. Devanudaya Rajyatthukaga Thivaravadiyah Yilikkaravan Pishasudaya Rajyatthukaga Bayankaravadiyah Nii Kattarukki Thivaravadiyah Yenraal Nii Pishasudaya Bayankaravadiyah A militant A militant of a cause Cause he stands for Is called the terrorist Of the cause he is standing against Zealous for the Lord. Militant for, I don't want to use the word terrorist for the Lord. Militant for the Lord. Terrorist for the devil. Devil should tremble at him. We use all our intelligence, all our force against the terrorists. So the devil will put all his might against the terrorists. He is a terror to the hell. He is a terror to the hell. If you are a terror to the devil, zeal for the Lord against sin, the Lord will make a covenant of peace with you. That is truly the peace that Paul said, all understand, the peace that Paul said, all understand it. Incomprehensible. He makes a covenant of peace, a covenant of shalom with Pinnacles. Why was he zealous for the Lord? It is not just jealous for the Lord, he was jealous for his people. His people should not be consumed. Let's come what me. My father should not go to hell. Let come what may, my mother should not go to hell. Let come what may, my co-born should not go to hell. A jealous for his own people. People from my religion, people from my denomination, they should not go to hell. My friends, They should inherit the kingdom of God. They should inherit the kingdom of God. <coughs> if you have got this jealous, he makes a covenant of peace with you. So these are ten things. I do believe you would be able to remember it. Number one, you should be his people. It's not enough. You should be his saints. Even that's not enough. You should love the law and apply the law of God in your life. Number four, you should be upright. Number five, you should be righteous. You must have a right standing with God. And it's not enough that we are righteous. Number six, we should be meek. We should be able to laugh at the storm when Jesus is in the boat. To laugh at the storm. We should be spiritually minded. Number eight, our mind should be set on him. Number nine, 
we must find wisdom and understanding. And number ten, we should be jealous for the Lord and for the Lord's people. Then his peace shall be great. As a conclusion, I love to give you a few verses. Make a note of it. 147 verse 40. 147 verse 40. What happens when he gives this peace? He make a peace. He make a peace in thy borders and fill thee with the finest of the wheat. Number one. When he gives peace, he fills us, he satisfies us with the finest of the wheat. When he gives his shalom, when he gives his shalom, he gives me the best. In his shalom, I get the best way. I get the best children, I get the best job, I get the best journey, I got the best church. Everything the best the Lord will give. He satisfies with His goodness. When He gives this peace, number two, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 6. And I will give you peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. Number two. Not only gives us satisfaction. I don't want to go to part four, part five. I love to conclude today. Desire this peace. He gives the best of the wheat to you. Desire this peace, he will give you good rest. He will keep the beasts away from the land. Today your sleeps are disturbed. You are unable to you are unable to lie down on green pastures. You are unable to enjoy a rest. There are problems, bees are around you. Your mother-in-law, father-in-law, your daughter-in-law, your neighbor, that officer, that colleague, that somebody in the church. You feel there are bees around you. Ravening bees. Lurking around. Whom they could devour, whom they can turn. They are unable to rest. There are swords passing in your life. No peace within your walls. You desire this peace. You be the child of this peace. If you know the way of the peace, there will be no beast in your land. There will be no work of the evil spirit in your life. No sword will pass through your land. My dear brother, my dear sister, what do you get when you have this peace? Number three, Isaiah 26, 12. Lord, thou will ordain peace for us, for thou also hast wrought all our works in us. When you have this shallow, when you are able to possess this shallow, the Lord will work out everything for you. The Lord will go before you. The Lord will set the crooked things straight. If you are a child of peace, if you are a son of peace, daughter of peace, the Lord will work out everything for you. He satisfies you. He will keep the peace away. He will work out everything for you. And number four, Ezekiel 34 verse 25. Please make a note of it. Go home and meditate. Ezekiel 34 verse 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will curse the evil beasts to seize out of the land and they sh shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. In the wilderness there are snakes, serpents, 
there are beasts evil beasts lion bear woods forest in the wilderness in the woods you will be able to sleep peacefully because he has got safety around you so if you will desire this peace he'll give you the best of the wheat if you desire this peace he gives you rest and tranquility if you desire this peace whatever situation may be he will work for your cause if you desire that beast even in wilderness even in woods even in difficult terrains you would be able to enjoy his scent i love to read a passage to you the passage which we have been reading in the last few weeks today i love to read that passage and conclude isaiah chapter 60 Isaiah chapter 66 from verse 10 Rejoice ye with Jerusalem rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her and ye that love her rejoice for joy with her all ye that mourn for her what is that rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her and be glad with her all ye that love her rejoice for joy with her all ye that mourn for her all ye that love her all ye that mourn for her rejoice what is that love her mourn for her was leaven that you may suck and be satisfied with the press of Uh, of her consolation that you may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory okay if you love jerusalem if you mourn for jerusalem you rejoice you may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolation that you may milk out and be uh, delighted with the abundance of her glory what is that verse one for thus say the lord behold look look i will extend peace to her like a river i will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the gentiles like a flowing stream then shall you suck you shall be born upon her sides and be Uh, and be a uh, dandel upon her knees as one whom his mother comforted so will i comfort you and you shall be comforted in jerusalem and when you see this your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like a uh, like a her and the hand of the lord shall be known toward the servants and his indignation to words his enemies it's a very long passage gobbling i'll throw more light on this passage later sufficient for today just to explain this passage to you very briefly if you love jerusalem jerusalem is your local church great is the lord and greatly to be praised This is the city of God beautiful for situation joy of the whole earth for you is the church you is the church if you are glad with the church when the church has got some problem you mourn for the church you rejoice with the church you love the fellowship of the saints you pray for them 
you be blessed by their milk be delighted with all the blessings in the church you receive the holy spirit you receive prayer you receive consolation counseling the rod and the staff when you are going astray he will he will take the staff hey 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 come 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 he will hit when a wild beast come he will take the rod he will fight the battle he will stand on his knees for you they will sob and cry for you my dear brother my dear sister he will suck of her breast he will suck of her breast you are delighted in her the husbands are delighted in their wives there are some men who delighted in other men or other women similarly there are believers they are delighted in their church they are delighted in their pastor is not that we should hate at this but others could not satisfy them they don't suck from the breast of somebody else they won't matter there can be many preachers but father is one the father is one some people are delighted in the jerusalem the lord has given them some people desire the waters of babylon there shall be waters in babylon also there shall be waters in assyria also in nineve also they desire the waters of babylon some people are satisfied to be on the knees of their mother to be dandled by their mother to drink the milk out of their mother they are delighted in it they are glad with her they are mourn for her if your relationship with your god given church with a god given servants of god like this were you able to enjoy this relationship your peace will continue to be great your peace will continue to be great the lord has spoken to the church the lord wants to bless you with this peace peace that paul said all understand shalom alek peace be upon you peace be upon you to have this peace that pause at all understand be god's people be saints love the lord in all your dealings be upright have a right standing with god be meek don't get irritated or perturbed when you are hurt try to enjoy playing with the waves to the spiritually minded to them that trust the lord whose mind is stayed on him number 9 who finds wisdom and understanding number 10 those who are jealous for the lord and jealous for the lord's people that the wrath of god should not consume them if we have that peace if we have that peace he will satisfy with the best of the bee he will keep you safe in the wilderness in the woods where there are lions and bears where there are serpents and vipers scorpions the lord will be able to keep you safe and you will dwell safely you will dwell safely god wants to give this peace to all of them that you delight in jerusalem that delight that could delight in their pastor in that congregation those who can delight the milk of their mother's breast 
that past your past who strains himself to get this way who wants to comfort you who wants to console you who wants to correct you your pastor man who weeps 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 for you cries in the presence of god for you if you are satisfied with him if you are satisfied with what you get in jerusalem you will enjoy the peace that passeth all understand her peace will be like a river that surely bless you shall we pray and upon which you give to every one of us not the world not any other man but you are giving that peace the un disturbed peace which is always with us and it is remains it remains with us and we enjoy it and we experience it and we are sharing with others we thank you lord for the message we are giving us continuously on this subject lord we commit each of us in your hand help us to remain in the peace till the end we may go with the peace everywhere and people around us may also receive this undisturbed peace that people may receive it from you and use us for sharing this peace in jesus name we pray